kind of looking at this fantasy playlist with a little bit of wonder again. Debuting at number 40, Fantasy Playlist, November 29, 1986. An artist that just didn't seem to fit into the 80s, and yet she did have that comeback hit. Coming around again, Carly Simon, debuting at number 40 on my Fantasy Playlist, November 29, 1986. Carly Simon, I mean, how do you fit Carly Simon in 1986 on a top 40 station? How do you play Carly Simon alongside the Beastie Boys, alongside Debbie Gibson and Tiffany, which was coming up over at over the horizon or maybe the hair metal bands like Bon Jovi and Cinderella and uh, Poison and they were just over the horizon too Poison and Cinderella and of course the dance music the Pet Shop Boys New Order how do you play or Prince how do you play how do you squeeze Carly, Carly Simon amidst all this the newer music of the 80s how do you do it well you do it by well by marketing marketing her for the adult contemporary charts. This was a big adult hit for Carly Simon. Went to number five on adult, although it did get up to number 18 on Billboard Top 100, coming around again. And uh, it's from the album. I'll get to that album in just a minute. I want to go back on Carly Simon. I, it's, God, what an amazing voice. Just She she's came out with some amazing songs uh, back in the spring of 1980. Back in the spring of 1971, that's the way I always heard it should be. That was one powerful record, which was written by a man, by the way, although she co-wrote it, co-wrote that song. And uh, there was anticipation in the spring of 72. You're So Vain in late 1972. Love and Use the Right Thing to Do in the spring of 73. And then a year later, in the summer of 1974, it was... Uh, uh, what was the name of that record? It's written by a fellow. Uh, it's written by a guy. I think one of her friends wrote the song. And uh, uh, I haven't got time for the pain, 1974. And then Attitude Dancing in summer 75. And 1977, Nobody Does It Better. And not a year later, You Belong to Me. Her last really big hit was Jesse in 1980. Late summer, fall of 1980. That went to number 11 on Billboard's Hot 100. She put out some albums in the 80s, but uh, it, it's really hard. <sighs> The musical style, the music style just changes. It changes with each decade, and sometimes it's just it's harder for an artist to fit in to the top forty of a different era than it was in an earlier era. Uh, if that makes any sense at all, and such is the case for Carly Simon. But this album did really well for her. Uh, I do recommend a song by her from 1985. It's one of the most powerful videos I've ever seen. Uh, she she inked a deal with Epic Records in 1985, and she came out with this one album called Sport Girl, and uh, Tired of Being Blonde was the first single. And she's not blonde, but still. And But the song was My New Boyfriend. Night Tracks ran this video in 1985, and it was just, oh, it was a very powerful record. Nice video by Carly Simon. It was really nice to see her again. And then uh, she and then she signed a deal with Arista Records, uh, Clive Davis's record company, in 1986. And Coming Around Again was the album that she came, on, came out with, first album for Arista in 1987, which featured about two or three singles that went... Uh, uh, top 10 that were big adult hits on the adult charts. Uh, you could probably play her like alongside people like Sting or Bruce Springsteen. Maybe even Tears for Fears. But anyway, uh, and the song coming around again from that album. And I, I guess I've already given the chart stats on that. I think I've said enough. Uh, the accolades just keep rolling for Carly Simon. Songwriter Hall of Fame. Inducted into the Songwriter Hall of Fame in 1994. And uh, she was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame uh, for the song You're So Fame. That happened in 2000. Well, I can't read my chicken scratch. It's either 2004 or 2009. And uh, I tell you, my favorite song by Carly Simon. It just hits the spot. It's just it's absolutely beautiful. This is Carly Simon at her this is at her best. Just a beautiful atmospheric song that just showcases her powerful vocals. No secrets with Carly Simon. We have no secrets. Off that album, No Secrets. One of her biggest albums. I just uh I remember when I first heard No Secrets. I heard it once on the local Top 40 station, 1150 WJRD, and I just fell for it. 
and I, and over a period of time, you know, the song just, it's like vintage wine. It just it tastes better with each drink <laughs> over the years. <laughs> no secrets. I highly recommend a book. There was a book that came out. It's by a woman named Sheila Weller. She wrote this brilliant book called Girls Like Us. This is a three, this is a massive, it's an epic book. A three-part biography of Car Car Carly Simon. Carol King and Joni Mitchell. If you're really into the, song, the songwriters of the 60s and 70s, uh, this book is a must. It's a fantastic biography. I read this book back in 2008, 2009. Could not put this thing, could not put it down. If you're a music lover, I highly suggest this book. Girls Like Us. I think the only woman who interviewed for this book uh, among the three artists was Carly Simon, but uh, the other, the other. Fidgetettes, the other uh, the biography pieces of Carol King and Joni Mitchell just hit. I mean, it's just it's, it hits home. Very detailed. A plus, A plus, 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 plus. Girls Like Us by Sheila Weller. Highly recommend that book. Highly recommend this song. It just it just seems out of place, and yet in place at the same time. That doesn't make any sense. But then it's two o'clock in the morning. And very few things make sense <laughs> this early in the morning. Carly Simon coming around again to debut at number 40 on my fancy playlist.